We'll begin with comments from Greg, and then we'll take your questions. Thank you, Michael. Um, we were disappointed after the Germany game. We had a number of things to work on, and I felt like the, the team responded really well. Uh, that we were looking for aggression. We were looking for um, threatening their back line, ball movement from side to side, breaking in the middle, then, then going wide, and I think we did a good job of that. Uh, you can see the first half in particular was a really strong performance by the group. And um, overall, we talked about using these two games as a learning experience. And um, I think we certainly did that. We got some great information from the Germany game and we're able to compete against a, a really talented Ghanaian team and, and get a good result. So overall, pleased with the camp. And now we move on to Nations League where we're awaiting our opponent. If you have a question in the room, please raise your hand. We'll start with Stephen Goff. Greg, um, when you see the team, the attack clicking like it did, or collectively everything clicking the first half, is this, you, know, you always want to see better. But is this sort of what you envision um, this group, this personnel, uh, being able to do at their at their capacity. It's again to, to me. It's it's a work in progress, and um, you know our job is to, to continue to build and progress and get better and improve. And when you see a, a half like the first half that we played, it certainly is a, a marker that we're getting better and we're improving. And um, you know, so that that's important. Uh, but uh, again, I think it's still going to take work. It's still going to take, um, you know, focus and, and progress by, by the whole group um, to get to where we need to be. Um, second question: that Yeah, Geo scoring twice tonight. Yeah. Um, it's it's been a trying year for him in many ways, on and off the field. Yep. Um, wh what are your thoughts on him being able to, um, I guess, punctuate things with with a couple goals and, and playing well in these in these two matches? Yeah, you know, the the goal for Gio in this camp was to play him 245 minutes. Um, and much like Ballo in the last camp, we wanted to send him off on a good way. But a lot of that has to do with the player and the player's mindset. And I think Gio, what I've seen from training session number one in this camp was extreme amount of focus and um, ability. Uh, so when he when he plays like that, like he did this entire camp, um, you know, he's certainly a guy that, that can help this group. And it's really good to see him respond like that. Second row to your left. Hey, Greg. Uh, Valer Shabilla with Broadway Sports. Um, can you take away much from a match where you were up 3-0 22 minutes in? And, and if so, what were the main takeaways that you saw from tonight? Yeah, you know, that's an interesting question because if we would have scored three goals late, the question would have been, you know, why are we leaving late? Why are we scoring late goals, you know? So... To me, of course, you, you need to be professional and you need to win these games, and we did that, and, and that's the important thing. Um, you know, Ghana, Ghana has a ton of talent. Um, when you look at the roster, you know, they have Champions League players, Premier League players, and it, it's a strong roster. So you, you have to be able to beat the teams that you face. And, um, you know, the fact that we did it early was good. The, the one disappointment I would say would, would be when we made the six changes. Um, you know, we didn't get a similar type of impact that we would have liked. And um, that's a little bit disappointing, but I have to say our, our solutions have done a great job in these last four games and, and um, even going back to Nations League. They've been really good coming off the bench, and, and tonight just wasn't the night for them. In the back to you, right? Thank you, Coach. Um, Russell Wiafi on TopSport.net in Chicago. Um, enough of you and Gio and all of that incredible performance today. Um, how will you rate the performance of the Ghanaian team as well as the coach? Because most of the fans in Ghana are so pissed. But how personally will you rate the performance of the Ghanaian team? Thank you. No, you know, I, ha I have to say, um, you know, and, and I'm not, I'm not going to comment on the coach. That's not my job. That's not my, my style anyway. But what I would say is... Um, being down 4 nothing at halftime, Ghana had a choice. Right? They could have mailed in the second half and they could have lost 8 nothing, but they didn't do that. They kept fighting to the last minute of the game. Um, you see the boy tried to shoot from half field, trying to get a goal, trying to do something. And, um, you know, I think that's mar a mark of a team that's still fighting. And so, you know, I, uh, okay, they didn't play a great half, but they didn't give up, and that's, that's an important quality that a team shows. Hi, Coach. Jake Fenner, Daily Mail. Hey, Jake. Uh, the 4 2 4 worked pretty well against Germany. Didn't exactly produce the result that 
maybe the U.S. hoped, but it worked really well today. Four goals in a great outburst. You saw a lot of people going forward. Uh, is this a kind of tactic that you're going to use situationally, or is this alluding to that grand vision of changing soccer in America forever? Is that 424 kind of the physical embodiment of that idea? <laughs> so dramatic with your question. Now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't get too carried away with formation because, again, to me, it's just, it's just it reflects the opponent. It reflects shape that we think can, can prevent um, – you know, can prevent the opponent from hurting us. And offensive shape always looks different than, than that, right? So let, I don't think we get hung up on, on exactly what the formation looks like, but I think it's more about the combination play, the attacking play, the, the dynamic play that you saw today is what we're aspiring for. Um, and then, again, reflecting on the Germany game is, um, you know, we can't, we can't concede like we did the, ch the amount of chances, and that needs, that needs to, to continue to be a focus. And today... Um, you know, very few chances conceded. Matt had one great save to keep the shutout, um, but that was important. Back left. Yeah, Greg, Ben Wright with Broadway Sports Media. Um, you talked in the pre-match presser a little bit about just getting Ballo involved. Yep. Um, what yep. did you make of, obviously, his goal, but um, just his involvement in possession in, in some of the early goals? Yeah, it, w it was, again, you can tell guys were looking for him, and that's the most important thing. One of the best players I've ever coached was running behind the back line, and... Um, you need guys picking up on his runs. You need guys brave enough to play the ball. And, and today you saw that. So I think that was a step forward for the team um, in terms of getting getting Ballo involved. And, and you saw he was able to score and could have had a couple more also. Good performance. Second one right in the middle. Coach um, Thierry Nyan, uh, TV3 Ghana. Hello. First of all, congratulations on your big win. Thank you. Um, although we are not happy. Um, my question to you is, were you surprised by Ghana's rather very disappointing performance? And was it also a plan, um, you know, to continue to use the right flank? Was it that you, you, you identified Ghana's left side of defense as a weak link in the entire team? So two well, questions in yeah. there, please. No, well, I think, you know, in the first half, we were busy on the left as well, right? It, it was, you know, part of the idea was to attack the sides, the sides of the field. Um, both flanks. You saw Christian had, was was very active, and then um, first half as well on um, the right side. So we want to be aggressive going on the sides. We want to draw them to the middle, then get to this side with with speed, and we did that. Um, but again, you know, there was there were some good moments by Ghana in, in the game. Uh, you can see they have quality. You can see they have talent in the squad. It's a young squad. I think the coach was brave enough to play. You know, a lot of young players in today's game. So, you know, for me, it's just about continuing the path and, um, and you know, continuing to prove, improve to reach your goals. Claudio. Uh, Claudio Villalobos from uh, Nashville Total Sports, Greg. Uh, in his side of what happened in, in the previous game and, and the fact that the U.S. pretty much put away the game in the first half, um, what can you tell us about perhaps a couple of things that you really like in terms of what you, when you compare both games and also, uh, it's not that we haven't seen Team Wea playing this well before. We have. But the, how do you like the, the fact that he was pretty much unstoppable tonight? Yeah, he, he was certainly dynamic, and it was great to see Timmy. He's such a, a, a good person, a great teammate, and um, a selfless, selfless worker on the field. So it was great to see him also play 90 minutes. You know, we take him out of the game sometimes, and, um, you know, we challenge him to continue to play 90 minutes in this game, and, and he responded to that. So that was really good to see. Um, you know, in terms of takeaways from this game or from the, this camp, you know, I, I certainly saw the group um, confident in attack. You know, I think that we're, we're confident that we can hurt teams uh, with the ball. And, and, and it showed against Germany, it showed again tonight, and, and that was really good. And, again, it's, uh, it's about in these high, high-level games keeping a shutout and keeping the, the opponent limited to few chances, and that's something that – um, we did tonight, and we didn't do so well against Germany, and it's gonna, we're going to need to continue to improve on that. Straight back. Uh, Greg, Jacob Shames out with the Tennessee. And, um, you know, you've mentioned earlier in this camp about wanting to have kind of a plan B in the midfield without Tyler Adams available. And I guess how do you evaluate the midfield right now after, you know, these two games, you got two different looks in the starting lineup in there? Yeah, it, it's, it was different, right? And I think, um, you know, 
it, it always has a different look when, when Tyler's missing, but when you, you have workhorses in there still, whether it's Johnny or, or, um, or Weston or Eunice or Luca, um, Gio dropping deep into the midfield today. So there, there was definitely um, guys that can, that can produce, produce passes and produce dangerous attacks. So overall, I think the midfield did a, a good job um, in, in this game. And, you know, we're going to continue to evaluate moving forward. We're going to take two more questions, and then we'll bring the coach from Ghana, and we'll do so virtually beginning with Paul Tenorio. Great. Congrats on the performance tonight. Uh, sorry to go to uh, a topic not about your performance, but earlier today Michael Bradley announced that he was going to be retiring this weekend, obviously wore the captain's arm band for the U.S. for a long time. I wonder if you could give some perspective on – Michael's career, from your from your vantage point, and how you think U.S. fans should remember him and his contributions to the program. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, you know, Michael will go down as an icon um, in, in U.S. soccer history. Uh, had a had a great career, um, both for the U.S. Na men's national team and for his his club career. I remember 2006 World Cup. He he was joining the team um, to train with us before we left for Germany and. Um, I, I sat next to him at, at one dinner, and I remember just talking to him and, and hearing from him. And, and at that time, you know, he was wise beyond his years. And, and who would have known he would have gone on to have such a, a fantastic career? But uh, you know, very, very smart player, very determined player. He had, I think, almost everything um, in terms of the qualities you'd want in a, in a player and a teammate. So um, very competitive, and, and you know, there's it's no surprise that he played on some you know some really strong U.S. teams. And, and when I think about the Confederations Cup, 2010 World Cup, um, you know, he was front and center in that, and, and 2014 World Cup as well. So overall, um, congratulations to Michael uh, on a great career, and um, he'll leave a legacy with the men's national team. Last question comes from Charlie Bone. Hey, Greg, uh, congrats. I wanted to, to get a little more insight into um, Gio's performance and also how you deployed him and kind of how the, the players and the relationships fit into the shape. Because I know you, you like the four three three, but it looks a little different nowadays. And I just wonder how you factor, what are the risks and the rewards of using him and, and kind of making everything work as well as possible in the attack? You know, I thought Gio was really, really good today. Um, and... You know, perhaps man of the match type performance. You know, we gave it to Serginho because he played 90 minutes and he was also really dynamic in, in his actions. Um, but you know, Gio got two goals, and besides the goals, it was you know how he brings players into the attack, how he um, is able to to be calm on the ball, gives us that that calm and the poise that we need at times. Um, but then is decisive when when making final passes. And to me, this performance was just really an indicator of his entire camp. Um, he had, a, as I said before, he had a very strong camp, great mindset, great, great trainings, uh, training sessions. And, and to me, it's not only offensive stuff that he did tonight. It's more what he does, what he did off the ball. Um, I think relentless work. We talked to that, about that before the game, relentless work rate uh, defensively. And, and he certainly did that. So I think it was a good step for us in midfield today. We went with two and then one, Geo a little bit higher. Um, but, uh, you know, I, th I still think there's, there's more to it where it can be flexible and rotating more, and, and we'll continue to work on that. As we go, we'd like to congratulate the U.S. Power Chair soccer team who just defeated England 3-1 in the Power Chair Football World Cup. There we go. Let's go, guys. Thank, Thank you. you.